I wanted to make this video to weigh the pros and cons of me specifically switching from Windows 11 to Linux and see if it's worth it. Let's give it a shot. So one pro about switching to Linux is that it is free. Free as in it's free in monetary value, but free also in that you have the freedom to kind of customize it the way you want. You're not locked into an OS like Mac OS or Windows. There's a lot of options that you have when you switch to Linux. And then open source, meaning that it's community developed. It's not developed by a corporation. It's developed by community members that vet these things, that use these things frequently. So there, it's kind of a for us, by us situation when it comes to Linux. And that freedom aspect kind of leads me to my next Next pro which is customization. Linux is very customizable not just visually but how everything is running in the background. You have a lot more control over your operating system when you're using Linux. That can be a good thing and that could also be a bad thing because you have the power to basically just run a simple few character script and delete your entire system. That's the kind of customization I mean and that's kind of the downside of that customization, if you if you will. Security. Security is another major thing when it comes to Linux. Inherently, there's more security just because a lot of malware isn't developed for Linux. A lot of the malware is developed for the most popular operating systems like Windows and Mac OS. When you're using a distribution of Linux, it can get quite niche unless it's on the kernel level which is what all linux systems are built on top of but you really shouldn't have to worry about the kernel getting malware that's a very protected core and next up is performance and i don't mean performance as in cpu and gpu power you know pushing out a really high intensity game i'm more thinking about performance as in out of the box experience just using the os as the daily driver Linux is just so lightweight compared to Windows. That's why a lot of people install Linux on old machines to bring them back to life because running Windows on a really old machine, Windows only gets more complicated to use. And when you install Windows on an older machine, it just really struggles just because of that base level power that Windows machines need to just be useful. Linux just runs at such an efficient level that it just blows Windows out of the water when it comes to just being a daily driver and not bogging down your CPU and RAM by just running the OS. And another pro on the Linux side that you may not be thinking of is just apps. And when I say apps, I don't mean that there are more apps on Linux when it comes to Windows. Windows has a ton of apps that are compatible with it. I'm not talking about it at a compatibility level. I'm talking about it from an accessibility level. A lot of the Windows applications are not free. And since Linux is built on a free and open source model, a lot of the applications that you can get on Linux, they're all free, all of them. Video editing software, photo editing software, there's just a ton of free apps that are available on Linux that just don't you know, have a credit card option on them at all. All right, so now let's go over the cons and what Windows may have as an advantage over Linux. All right, so compatibility. There are a few applications that I'm worried are not gonna run great on Linux or not run at all on Linux or require a lot of massaging that just one click install EXE and they run fine on Windows. One of those applications is DaVinci Resolve, my editing software that I edit these videos with. There is a Linux version of DaVinci Resolve that is on their site. They have a Windows version, a Mac version, and a Linux version. And that Linux version is kind of a one size fits all. So when you run into an app that just kind of has one Linux install, you get worried that it may not run on your specific distribution because there are a ton of different Linux distributions. And the one I'm using is Fedora. So I was looking around on different forums, seeing how much success people had running DaVinci Resolve on Fedora 39. And a lot of people were just having problems with it running, period. But they eventually did get it working. So I know I'm going to run into some roadblocks there. So with other apps, I'm slowly switching over to different software that is supported by Linux and Windows. One of those apps being Evernote. I use that note taking application for pretty much everything. And it does have a browser based application that you can use, which is how I got by on Linux before on my other Linux machines. And I love Evernote for that. The fact that I can just pull up a browser on any machine and access my notes from there is great. And it runs great on my Windows machine and it runs great on my Mac. The problem is they were developing a Linux application for it that you can install on your actual Linux machine and not have to go to a web browser. And I was actually in the beta program for the Linux build of Evernote. And after a while, I think I changed distributions and went over to a different version of Ubuntu or something like that. And I went back over to Evernote to re-download that file so I can get it back installed on my Linux machine. And lo and behold, they ended their endeavor on actually developing for Linux. So they just pretty much released a statement that said, yep, yep, we're done. We're not supporting Linux. It doesn't really matter to us. We're just gonna stick to Windows and Mac and browser. Your SOL. And I was like, man, that's tough. So I stopped paying for it. And that's why I switched over to Obsidian for my note taking. Not because it's free and open source, because it is not. It is developed for Linux, but it is closed source. So that was one less application that I had to worry about when switching from Windows to Linux. And I kind of followed suit for a lot of other applications as well. There is a learning curve when it comes to Linux. Luckily, I have a little bit of an advantage because I did 
study a little bit of Linux in college. I took a couple of the Red Hat courses and I work with Linux every day now from work to tinkering around with my single board computers, but not as a daily driver. I've never used Linux as a daily driver on my main PC. So there'll be a learning curve even for me in this aspect. Another one is drivers. That was a big one for me because I use Nvidia graphics cards pretty much since I started building my own PCs. I've always had Nvidia GPUs. And if you know a little bit about Linux, you'll know that Nvidia is sort of the redheaded stepchild when it comes to drivers. And that is one of the main reasons why the Steam Deck has an AMD chip because it's just more compatible with Linux. And that leads me to my next topic. Everyone's favorite, gaming. Gaming on Linux is a growing topic. Back to the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck has catapulted gaming on Linux to a, a crazy level. Gaming on Linux had always been a thing, but then there's like this curve, like with the Steam Deck curve. It was kind of going up like this, the Steam Deck hits, and then pff, gaming on Linux has gone from, from a very niche thing to like a very obtainable thing now. All right, so I've got all my pros and all my cons. Now it's time to make a decision. Is it gonna cause a ton of friction with work or playing games? Is it just gonna be a hassle trying to just, just do my day to day? And I think I'm ready for the challenge. I can always switch back to Windows if I want, or I could just stick it out and, and see how far I can get with Linux. Enough talking, let's just do it. I made this video a little while ago about taking an old MacBook Air and installing Ubuntu on it and getting really good results with it. Actually better performance than with Mac OS. And if you wanna follow the journey, I'm gonna start a playlist here about my journey from switching from Windows 11 to Linux. Wish me luck.